This video is made possible by the following mad lads. All their awesome gear they've supplied to me can be checked out in the description below. Hey guys, Historic Boy here, and welcome back to R Factor 2 for another video. Now this weekend, F1 goes to Monte Carlo, to the Monaco street circuit, the jewel in the crown of the Formula 1 calendar. Now usually the racing at Monaco is pretty boring, unless there's a little bit of rain to spice things up, but... One of my favorite moments on the F1 calendar of the entire year is Saturday. Qualifying at Monaco really shows off the skill of these F1 drivers. And usually I would try and beat the fastest time set in qualifying for a video like this. But I thought, you know what? Let's mix things up a little bit. So what I've got in front of me right here is a Matra V12 Formula One car from 1968. And as you can see, it looks a tiny bit different from the F1 cars we're used to. The only downforce element on this car are those little dive planes at the front. Whilst I couldn't find any exact figures for this car in terms of power, I'm willing to say probably about 450, 500 brake horsepower or so from the V12 engine bolted in behind the driver in a car that weighs pretty much just over 500 kilograms. That's a power to weight of around 800 horsepower per tonne around a street circuit in a bathtub. Now the pole time for the F1 race in 1968 was a 128.2 and that was set by the legendary Graham Hill. And he's actually the inspiration for this video because the other day I was browsing through social media as I do because I'm a filthy millennial and I came across a clip of him talking about driving a Formula One car in period in 1968 around the streets of Monaco. It's a really cool clip and I recommend you watch it so I'm going to be popping it down in the description. But I think it's time to leave this pit area, I'd say pit lane, that's not really true of this version of the circuit, and see if I can beat the F1 pole time from 1968. Right then, so here I am on board in my V12 Matra F1 car from 1968. We're just starting in the little Monaco pit area here. So what I'm going to do for my outlap is uh, just go around a little bit slowly and kind of show you around the circuit as it was about 50 years ago. Of course, we're on board in a historic 60s F1 car, so age pattern shifting. Clutch on the way up. First of all, down the start finish straight, which again is largely unchanged from what you expect today. And now we come down to Sandavot, T1. So on the brakes, you can see it's a lot more open than we used to uh, with the modern day circuit. So you can carry quite a bit of speed through there if you're drifting through. Now up the hill, just a little squeeze of throttle there that reminds just how much power this thing has. Through Massonet now. I'm gonna try and keep the car from sliding too much here. Then we come to Casino, as uh, Graham Hill said, in the video I recommended earlier, I want to try and flourish out of there, a little bit of a sideways drift if you're feeling brave. Then we come down to uh, this mirror boat, easy on the brakes through there, and now down to the hairpin. As I said, the, the, the circuit is largely unchanged from what we're used to today, which is kind of what makes Monaco such a cool track to race around, even in today's racing. There are a few differences though that you're about to see. First of all, coming down to Porsche, the tunnel starts a lot further back than it does. The tunnel starts about here in modern day, but starts a lot uh, further around in the uh, 60s version here. And we come through the tunnel, and now for probably the scariest part of a circuit, and one of the biggest changes is the chicane here. Very far chicane down the third, flick it through. And of course, at speed, that's very spooky indeed. Now come up to tobacco, or it used to be called the tobacco in this corner. Easy through there, a bit of a ramp up there, very easy to take too much speed and end up in the barrier if you're feeling a little bit too brave. No swimming pool area at all, so harden the power, and then we come to the hairpin kind of where the Raskas, Raskas is down there, so Anthony knows, I suppose. And there we go, that is a lap of Monaco as I get very sideways out of the last corner. Let's try and do a semi-decent lap. Now, damage is on in this to try and get the full, authentic, scary Monaco experience. So if I hit a wall, I'm probably going to end up sustaining some damage, which I really don't want. Anyway, through Sandoval for the first time, not bad. Up the hill in fourth gear, not really revving it out just yet, just getting a feel for how the car is over the bumps. Trying to brake and slow down a little bit, trying not to drift too much there. If I tag a wall at any point round here, that could be the lap over through Casino. Could probably use second through there, actually. I think I've got the, uh, the gear to do that. Oh, over the crest there, and the car gets all kind of side sideways. Go from third to first on the downshift. Second for a, a second. And then back to first for the hairpin. Putting all the lock, trying not to scrub the front tyres too much through there and not getting the power too hard next. The car will get sideways. Just a quick squirt, the throttle there, then back on the brakes. You can kind of mount the kerb if you want to, I wouldn't really recommend it that much, although you can do it on exit here very nicely. Into third gear, 
through the tunnel, fourth gear early. There you go, a bit of a sideways drift through there, and now, very scary part of the track, and a try third gear. One more sort of sideways, I'm not making that. Oh no! And we're in the harbour! <laughs> Almost immediately into the harbour. And what happened there is I tried to drift on the way in to slow the car down, but I just drifted out to the right, and at that point I'm a passenger, and it just goes to show how dangerous the old historic uh, circuits were. Okay, so let's try and get a banker lap time in without crashing horribly at the uh, far chicane. At the last corner, on the power, let's see what we can do. I'm going to try and keep third through Sandoval. Again, frame rate issues going down the T1 there, that's not ideal. Bit of a slide on the way through, bit too much of a slide. Sliding all the way up the hill, we don't want to be doing that too much. Easy, Jimmy, easy. You said banker lap, remember? Third gear through mass now. I think we can probably take second, really. I just, I just don't want to have too much, uh, too many revs coming over this little crest here. Now uh, you're okay, keep it in third, and then back down to second here. Just make sure you really put it into gear in this thing. Big blip on the way down. It's not like modern machinery where you can just stamp on the throttle and the car will comply. This thing bucks and tries to kick you off whenever you go anywhere near the throttle. It's a completely different experience to the inside. It's a bit of that curve on exit. It's a bit of that curve, all that curve. Right, how much speed can we take through the tunnel? How brave are we feeling? Not very brave. Speakers are not very brave. Chuck it in. Sliding on the way in there. Pretty sure we've taken fourth gear. Bit of air over there. Understeer to the exit. On the power. Now remember, a 128.2 is the time we have to beat. And I've gone very wide at the last corner, so there goes a lot of time. Let's see how close, how far away we are, shall we? 29.5. Okay, I'm going to keep going then. I'm going to keep running on this. So we're only 1.3 seconds off there, which was what a pretty bad lap, in my opinion. Whoa! Oh no! Okay. <laughs> And just as you start to get confident, the car reminds you that you are its bitch. I think I'm going to pull up at the cinema and go watch a movie instead. <laughs> so nice to know that we aren't too far off the time as it stands. I just need to drive a little bit better. A bit more confidence, I think, through the fast chicane as well will give me a bit of time. And just not being as aggressive with the power. And of course, uh, a last turn like that will be much appreciated as opposed to going very wide. Anyway, let's give it another shot. Bit too aggressive in the shift to third there, car didn't like it too much. Getting third gear down to Sandovo, aim for the curb on the inside, back on the power. Don't touch the barrier on exit, try and keep it straight and accelerating here. A little bit off the power as we come over the crest so the car doesn't react too badly. Braking uphill there before coming into Massena itself to slow down a bit quicker. And down to second gear through Casino. I'm going to try second this time. Third's fine, I think, through there. You don't actually get on the power too much for it to make a difference. Roll through Mirabeau. Probably keep it in first there, but don't like the idea of revving it out. A lot neater there through the hairpin, but a little bit wide coming down the hill, down to Portier. Now, oh, see if we can get on the power a bit quicker here. It's all about just being really efficient with your shifts, not spinning the wheels too much. Right, see how brave we can be. Third gear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We went through it okay. We lost a lot of time, I think. That was really scary on the way through. The thing is, these tyres last forever. So it's actually better for me to do another lap straight afterwards because the tyres are probably still heating up at the moment. So we'll continue this lap. Oh, a lot better through the last corner, but of course bad through the fast chicane. So let's see what our time is when we come across the line. 30.4, so we've actually lost a bit of time there, so not surprising really after that really bad run through the chicane. Let's see if we can go a bit quicker. Easy, easy. I say easy, but you have to be aggressive. I'm trying to be right there. Four wheel drift, don't touch the walls, my word. If you touch the barriers, it's just bent, uh, bent steering. And that's it, back to the pit lane. 
hold first down here. I'm going to try to hold first down to the uh, hairpin. Now you kind of run out of gear there a bit. I don't think you lose too much time doing that. I think you might lose more time just going for the shift, really. Yeah, quick skirt down the portier and then very wide. We use all the pavement, why not? Can we keep the speed through here? I've got to focus on getting through here in one piece. Maybe I can roll it through in fourth gear. Oh no, I can't. Definitely not. Definitely not. Oh my word. <laughs> this is this is difficult. This is really difficult. It's about now you start to realise just how insane old F1 drivers were. I'm going slower than they were, and I've crashed in a way that would probably mean the end of the driver in real life a couple of times, and still struggling to find that pace. Guys are crazy. Anyway, I need to go quicker. 29.5 is not good enough to beat the pole. We need another 1.4 seconds for that, or 1.3 seconds. So let's go out and try and find it. So you want to be aggressive through here, but if you start sending the car in too deep, you just get this horrible four-wheel side that you can't really come back from. That's better, that's better. Oh, over the bump in a horrible way there, steer me towards the wall. Is he using the locking of the car there to try and rotate it a little bit? The locking in the gearbox, I should say. Easy, easy, there you go. Oh, a bit too wide. Second gear straight away, I was trying to just hook it back in to the inside over the big kerb on the left there. That'll probably be broken suspension in real life. Well, saying that, these things are pretty hardy over bumps. <laughs> big slide. Heavy on the brakes. Oh, wrong line completely, wrong line completely. <laughs> I get a chill go through me every time I go through that corner in VR. It approaches so quickly. There you go. Smash the power. Why not? Far too early on the brakes. Scandy flick. No. So, is that anything closer? Surely. Point one, so we're less than a second off now. inside this headset right now. It's so much effort to drive this car around here fast. I think I found what I need to do to get that 28.2. Uh, really three tenths off at the moment. So I think uh, essentially it's just not mess up the last corner and have a lap like I did on the last lap. So I guess we'll give it a go. Oh no. Oh, oh Christ, close your eyes. This is exhausting. Much better for the last corner. This might be it. 
Wasn't the need to slow. What is it? 28.6, it was slower. No way. the talk of the V12 there. A bit too quick into there, I think. Let's try and lock it sideways coming out of porch here this time. Down of the brakes to start the car sliding through there. Bad line. Well, a bad second half of the lap, but this could be it. This really could be it this time. Point one. We matched the fastest lap from the race, but we beat the pole time of Graham Hill. Only just, it was a bit of a scruffy lap, and I nearly crashed again going through the fast chicane, but we just beat Graham Hill by one tenth of a second. And my word, this is such a blast. It's incredibly difficult and a little bit frustrating to understand, but you guys have to try this. You have RF2, go download this Matra V12. Go and make sure you've got historic Monaco installed and then just go and have fun. And as always, when I drive cars like this, it just gives me a new respect for those who drove them in anger in real life and, you know, without fear, going through corners like that bottom chicane there and just, just flooring it through there with no other thought in their mind because in VR, I was a little bit scared because your brain tricks you into thinking things are happening. I have no idea what that would be like in real life. But anyway, guys, as always, if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, hit the subscribe and the bell notification icon, because that way you'll be made notified of future streams and future videos like this. Let me know what you thought about the change of pace and mixing up the pole apps to maybe different areas of time, as opposed to just being modern F1 all the time. Thank you to the patrons and sponsors. You guys are rad. Take care. Have an awesome day. I'm going to go jump in the harbour. Catch you next time.